Hello everybody, this is Alex um, with a cool lock um, that I've had a little while. Um, this actually is another one that came off of the pod um, and uh, so first thing I'd say is it had absolutely no corrosion or anything on it so um, made pretty well. I believe these are made in China, but I don't recall. Yep, <laughs> you can see the Chinese lettering on the back of the key. Um, for a Chinese lock I'd say it's a very um, good quality lock. Um, what's cool about it is the so, key. Here's the key. It's a barrel style. That's the bidding on it. So there's like little steps in there. And it looks like the way it's it's made is that there's a piece, a separate piece in the center here. They mill that and then this part is, you know, fit in somehow. So it would probably be difficult to duplicate. Um, you need these little ridges on the sides for reasons we'll see in a moment. Here is the keyway. You'll see it has a little um, a little guard on it, or like kind of like the door on a um, on a star lock. lock. Yeah. And you just you just turn it and if you hear that the bidding on the key just engaged with the um, with the pins, with the key pins, and now, so if I were to pull this out, you'd see that the bidding is at this angle that we were seeing before. Okay, I'll move up a little bit. So we just shove this in here, and then rotate a quarter turn or so, and, he, and she pops okay. open, and then not key retaining. Um, so I'm going to gut this lock. Um, here, and because uh, I, I actually want to see what's going on inside, because I've been trying to pick it for a while without any success. Okay, there's a lock where you can now you can really see the key pin there, and put the key in. That rotates, and there's a little. This is a little detent or a little pin there that limits the rotation. I wanted to get in here and see what the pins look like because I've been having a heck of a time picking it. I want to know if it's due to tension issues or um, uh, that I should be expecting other pins. There is nothing in here to grab onto. Um, the the back of the keyway is is uh, solid. Um, and round. Uh, it's kind of a conical shape like the end of the key. Like that. I'm going to stop and um, attempt to take this apart, replace the battery in my camera, and come back and we'll see what's inside. Okay. Stop and get a close up of this. Okay. We're back with this um, LSL lock, which uh, is made in, I'm assuming, China. Could be Japan. Uh, my Here's the bow of the key if anybody reads one of those languages. But nothing in English. So, very curious set of pins in here. Okay, so if I can do this without getting in the way. We have five spools and a ball bearing in chamber six. So this is one, that's the front of the keyway. It's six. This is just a detent to give it a little bit of spring tension in the open and closed position. This is not part of the locking mechanism. We have a spool, uh, spools of equal size in all um, five chambers. We have two what appear to be steel pins in positions two and three, so that's a security feature. Um, and then the weird pin is pin number one, so the key is on this side, the driver's on this side. So you've got a little milled part here, a fat part here, and a thin part down here. Okay, that's pin one. Notice how long it is. All of the other key pins also have a fat part on the top, followed by a thin part on the bottom. 
Okay, and you might think that that's some kind of spoolerific deal, but it's not. Um, if we grab the plug, if we look at the plug, you can see that all of the chambers are, I believe that's countermilled. Counter that is there because there's no warding to keep the pins from falling out. <laughs> so those little lips and the fat part of the pin keeps the pin from dropping all the way through and the lock falling apart, which would be undesirable. Okay, now it gets weirder. Let me zoom, let me focus again. On the barrel, on the plug, there is a second little tube that it goes into. Okay. And this is a little weird, but I think I figured out what happens. So pin one, which would be here, when it's in place, the top of it is flush with the top of this little tube. So it does not want to be set any higher. If it goes any higher, it's going to bind. Um, so that may be an anti-picking kind of deal. It explains why I'm having so much trouble um, uh, picking the lock. Um, but I believe that it also means that if you're applying tension to that pin, this is going to tend to slip a little bit. I don't know how well that shows up. But there's a little bit of play this way and this way against the other pins. Okay, he's raised up above the shear line now. And there is some play in this. He's able to rock around, partly because of the shape of the pin and also just because there's a little bit of tolerance there it's going to tend to make him want to bind almost almost kind of like a serration right so if you're applying tension to the the whole deal um, it's going to want to bind and then you've got those spools in there with which are have very very thin lips on them you can see how thin the lips are on this guy i don't have a mic on me but you know that's a, at most a millimeter. It's probably less than that. So I suspect that they're around the same thickness as the metal in that tube. And they're going to get all sorts of bound up in there. So, um, it's explaining why I'm having, I've had so much trouble trying to get this open. So it's basically a five pin lock, all spools. If you think, if you now know what's going on in the lock, and this may just be the way this one is bitted, or they may all be this way, but it's really a four pin lock because pin one really cannot, you don't want to move it at all or the, or the whole thing's going to bind up. And then two steel pins and then two more regular bottom pins and spools. So. I would, I'm actually pretty impressed with how this is constructed, particularly since it's Chinese, and it was a bit expensive, and I don't feel ripped off at all. Um, I did a little scratching on the, I don't know how well you can see, but I did a little, little bit of scratch testing on the, uh, yeah, you can see that there, um, one with the pick and one with the screwdriver, and it, it scratched a little bit, but I think it's at least case hardened. It wasn't, I wasn't really pulling much metal off. It was just painting it a little bit. So this seems to be um, at least vaguely hardened. Those little, these little um, half moon shaped things that form a little uh, gate there also seem to be hardened, but they spin around so they're not really, you're not going to be able to drill those anyhow. Um, and you cannot bypass it because the back of the plug is solid. There's no way to get a wire or anything back in there. This is, a, is there a tiny little hole? There might be like the smallest of little tiny holes there where the drill went through, but um, you know, you're not getting, you're not bypassing that. So, <clears throat> uh, so challenge is picking this lock and I hope I can pick it on camera at some point or even on the couch. Um, tensioning it because there is no warding or anything to grab onto. You pretty much have to press against the pins and I think now that I've seen the inside, which is part of why I took it apart, I mean, there's just tension on pin one because I know that I don't, I actually don't even want him to move. So if I put a whole bunch of tension on him, he should stay still for me and we'll see what happens there. Um, and then work with these other pins. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be a challenge. 
um, but uh, you know, has to be doable. So there's our LSL lock gutted, um, and hopefully we'll be following this up in the near future with a video of it being picked open. This is Alex. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like my work. Um, and as always, have fun with your um, lock sport activities while keeping them illegal. Thanks so much. Cheers.